I don't have a garden. I don't have access to fresh produce. I don't have time. How can I can salsa? Whew, we are about to tell you the quickest, easiest way to make some delicious salsa. Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and we are all about pantry preparedness. And I am hooking us up with some salsa this year and we are participating in a week-long chaotic collab called Mrs. Wages Week. It is going to be fantastic. There are seven channels, I think, seven channels, and we're all going to be putting up a variety of Mrs. Wages um, videos all week long showing their different products, how we like them, how we use them. There's some really unique stuff coming up. I am not the unique one. I am the one that has never, in all of the years of canning, used Mrs. Wages. So today, we're going to make salsa. Yes, we are. We're going to do the medium salsa because, well, we don't like to burn our face off. Um, and I have heard from most of you that this stuff is amazing. And it's so simple and so easy. And I'm reading the directions going, really? That's all there is to it? What? But in all honesty, the intention with this is so that when my tomatoes do start ripening, which should be in a week or two, that I will be able to use this with my homegrown tomatoes. But today we're going to use canned diced tomatoes. You don't have to have a garden. You don't have to grow it all. You don't have to go buy cases at the farmer's market or the wholesale produce or wherever. You can just go to the store and you can get six cans of this and end up with five pints of this. Let me show you how easy this is. It's going to be a blast. Remember to check out the playlist. I'll have that linked at the back and on the bottom in the description box below because they are going to be dropping videos all week long, Monday through Friday, Mrs. Wages, and there's a giveaway. Let's get started. What do you need for this recipe? Ha, 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 ha. You need six uh, 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes of your choice, okay? And you need one packet of the salsa mix. What's in the salsa mix? This is my favorite part. Get your magnifying glass out, folks, okay? Ingredients are dehydrated vegetables, onion, green bell peppers, jalapeno pepper, chili pepper, garlic, which are the dehydrated vegetables, and then salt and spices. That's it. And this has, it has a best by date, right? But I know a lot of people that have used it past its best by date. So we're just doing the medium salsa. We have our six cans. It's gonna be fantabulous. You also need a half a cup of 5% white vinegar. When asked, the folks at Mrs. Wages said, do not alter the recipe, okay? Do not add stuff to it. Do not take stuff out of it. Do it just exactly as the package because that is what has been tested. That has been what is approved. So this is, this is not an invitation for a free-for-all, okay? And that's straight from the folks at Mrs. Wages who are super, super good about answering emails so if you have any questions about their products, definitely reach out to them directly. I am in no way, shape, or form saying that I'm an expert with Mrs. Wages because as I mentioned, I'm not. I am not at all. Now what I have noticed in emptying these cans is that the uh, certain kind of diced tomatoes, what's the difference? The no salt added, oh, because two of those cans are no salt added. Way to go, Lisa. Um, and then the other ones are just normal. They're all great value, okay? And so we're gonna empty all of those into the pot and it's in there with the vinegar. That is going to be your acid. That is what has been measured. So if you add stuff to it, other than the vinegar, the package, and the tomatoes, you're changing the acidity level in here and that's not a good thing, okay? So oh, that's what it looks like. That's it. So we're going to get that mixed up. We're turning on the heat and we need to bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for 10 minutes once it comes up to a boil per the instructions. It smells really good. And I like that it's, those are the ingredients. So we don't know exactly what their spices are, but you know, other than that, we know exactly what's in here. And I could pronounce every single thing. Look at that, that's gonna be some good, good salsa. I'm gonna have to go get some chips. Man. 
Okay, we are going to have salsa. And I think this is going to be amazing for using my home-grown tomatoes also. But this is exactly how simple it is. This is a water bath recipe. And per the directions, um, we can it for 40 minutes, which is the max amount of time for the steam canner. So I have the steam canner heating up. It's got my pint jars in there. It says it makes five pint jars. I pulled out six just in case because better to err on the side of caution, right? And those are all doing their due right now while I am heating this up because all we have to do is bring this up to a boil, simmer it for 10 minutes, and then put it in the jars. This is, I, this just, look at that. I need some chips. It's starting to boil. So I'm going to give this a little stir and then I'm going to turn down the heat, set my timer for 10 minutes. This smells so good. This smells so good. Okay, and those handles are hot. This smells so good. Look at that salsa. Okay, so now I'm gonna move over my canner. And remember, the steam canner takes two quarts of water, so it uses much less water, much less. And now we're going to take these. Hiya. Okay. Whew. Those are hot. I need my mittens. We are filling to a half inch headspace. Yes, we are. Okay. See, and that's nice and chunky. Chunky, chunky. Who likes chunky salsa? I do. I do. Okay, that's too much. Need a spoon. I am super good with one inch or a quarter of an inch, but a half an inch seems to flummox my brain. Okay, so I'm going to get some of that excess out of there. There we go. And we want to get this down to a half inch headspace. Now I had somebody send me something that's pretty cool. I want to show you. Check this out. They have a 3D printer. And so they developed a headspace, that, a headspace checker tool um, that has the one and a quarter inch. You know how you have to do raw pack chicken now? No, that's quarter. That's half. Okay. And I'm good. I'm at half. So this is super cool. If they decide to go to market with these, I will let you know for certain. So we're going to fill the rest of these jars. And we're going to get that half inch headspace. Yes, we are. And then I'll be back. It did. It filled five jars. It sure did. Okay, and we checked all of our headspace. Now we're going to take that same tool, and just for good measure, we're going to go in there and move it around and debubble, even though I think there's almost no possibility of bubbles being in there. Okay. And next, we are going to wipe the rims. Yes, we are. Handy tool. I really like that it has the inch and a quarter headspace. Okay, I'm going to have to turn my paper towel here. But um, again, because I want to make sure that there's nothing on the rim that could interfere with a good seal with the lid, I am using vinegar. You can use water, doesn't matter. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay, and next we're going to use our lids. As always, four jars canning lids for the win. I love this company. I think I've mentioned this like a hundred trillion times, but for real, I love this company. They are absolutely fantastic. They stepped up when nobody else would. They came in at an amazing price point. Let me get that other jar out of there. And they're a quality product. I mean, the only time I have had a fail is when it has been user error. So, whoa. Now remember the rings, ha, hot jars, folks, hot jars, so use your mittens, but finger tight, that's it. That's all you want to do is finger tight, because anything more than that can actually cause fails because it needs to vacate the excess air. So that half inch that's factored in there, that's why headspace is so important, because the whole calculation is based on the headspace and everything else for being able to vacate the air out of the jar still managed to keep that lid on, okay, 
and then oh, seal properly. So if you if you don't have the right right headspace, if it's too low, then what it could do is it could vacate um, not enough of the air, right, which would make it not good. Even if it's sealed, it would make it not good. And then if you have too high of a headspace, like you did a quarter inch instead of a half inch, then you could actually have, si have siphoning because, again, it's factored in. Now, I just noticed that is bent, so I am going to, thanks guys, I am going to put this on there. Now remember, hot, okay, don't put it on too loose because that doesn't work either. Finger tight, that's what you want on there. Now remember, the rings don't have to be beautiful. It's not an engagement ring, my friends. It is a tool, okay? So it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. So this one here, obviously, has a bend in it, so it's going bye-bye. Um, but this one, even though it's ugly, it's going to work just like a brand new ring. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters that it does the job. It is a tool. I do not typically have a 40-minute canning session, so you want to make sure that's on there correctly, and then have the heat and bring it up. For my zone, I have to be in that dark green area, okay? So once it hits the middle of that dark green area, I'm going to start my timer for 10 minutes. And this is approved and safe and good. Once it hits 40 minutes in the canner, you want to make sure you have that two quarts. I actually add a smidge more when it does 40 minutes because I want to make sure that I do not run the canner dry. Running the canner dry is a way to guarantee screwing up your canner and your canning project. We'll be back in 40 minutes. We have hit our 40 minutes. I'm going to turn off the heat and we are going to let this sit for about five minutes before we take the lid off. Woohoo! Okay, it doesn't look like there's any siphoning. Happy lady, happy lady. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful jar of salsa. I'm super excited. Yes, I am. So now we are going to let these sit here and cool off for at least 24 hours, okay? Well, within the first 24 hours, if for some reason it does not seal, you can reprocess it, no problem. Let them sit for 24 hours. Don't touch them, don't mess with them, don't turn them upside down, don't mess with the rings. Just put them on your towel or on your trivet and let them do their due, okay? If they did not seal within 24 hours, you can reprocess them, no harm, no foul. I would change out the lid, wipe the rim again, try to see if you could figure out why it didn't do it. Remember, 40 minutes is the longest that you can go in a steam canner. Steam canner can be swapped out for a water bath canner if you would rather water bath can or if you don't have a steam canner. It's all good and I can tell you that this smells absolutely insanely good and I know I'm going to be making a whole bunch of this this year. Thank you Tuli Lou Creates for inviting us to be part of Mrs. Wages Week. I am so excited. Be sure to check out this video so that you can see everything that's involved with it and the prize that you can win. Until next time, everybody, be safe.